Hello everybody, Richard here with CRG Games, and a long time ago I mentioned that I would do a video on how to use TCG Player Quick List to add cards to your inventory using a desktop scanner. Um, I'm doing that today, finally getting around to it, and um, it's pretty easy. There's a couple things I want to preface, um, and that's TCG Player no longer supports officially desktop scanners. What they recommend you use are overhead card scanners and they have their own recommendations those do work however i still prefer to use the desktop scanner because they also still work now when um you download the software if you're using scan snap uh, one of the fujitsu scan snaps you need to make sure you're, you're using scan snap manager and not scan snap home scan snap home will work but it has some quirks that are really annoying just don't use it Use ScanSnap Manager. If you need support, there is a dedicated Facebook page to um, TCG Quicklist with desktop scanners. I know it's kind of silly that that's actually a thing, but there's a whole support group for it. Um, and I'll show you what I did uh, to mine real quick. And that is on the um, guides here, they are plastic. And what can happen is if you don't cover those with something soft, um i use tape it can scratch the cards uh they're very very light scratches but they are still there so i did that um you need to make sure that you are cleaning your scanner out every once in a while you need to go in there and you need to blow it out with compressed air um, and that'll help keep dust down and um, when you're scanning lots of cards you'll notice little you know little tiny fine pieces of dust it's actually paper coming off the cards so every once in a while you need to clean it out. But uh, let's get started here. You'll see that I'm already sorting um, and listing some Midnight Hunt cards. First thing you want to do always is sort your cards ahead of time. So you're going to sort them by the set number. And that goes white, blue, black, red, white, um, and then multicolor. After you do that, get everything stacked up, I recommend pulling the foils out. Um, personally... I don't scan them through the desktop scanner just because the rubber rollers tend to get bound up when you have lots of foil cards and they won't be able to grip onto the card and basically it'll just be spinning. Um, obviously that damages the card so I'd recommend you use the spreadsheet method for foils. You can try it with this. I've had some success if you use smaller stacks. I just don't recommend it. So, you're going to get yourself a stack of cards, roughly about 15 cards. You don't have to count them. Um, you're just going to put them directly in there. You're going to hit space Oop, after I click on the application. And it's going to run through and scan. Um, I do have mine set up a little bit higher because the cards tend to uh, just fall right down. So, basically, what I, what I did is I made a little cardboard. Um, a little cardboard catcher here, and it catches the card. So let's run through another stack. Hit space. It's going to go ahead and dump those into our catch. And you'll hear that beeping. You can turn that off, but every time it loads up a card, it, it makes a little beep. Now, these cards are going to be in reverse order when you scan. It scans from the back of the stack to the front. So when you put these down into your stack, you need to make sure they're upside down, like so. And you can just keep going in stacks of about 15 cards. Don't overload it. Um, what will happen is, if you overload it, when the roller comes down on the card, sometimes it'll have too much pressure and it'll get stuck on two cards and then it'll scan incorrectly. So it never hurts to do a little bit less cards than more cards. And that's really all there is to it. You just rinse and repeat. The quick list software is great because it loads up um, all of the relevant information. You've got, uh, this is the number, the card scanned, not the actual card number. Um, the name, the set, condition, printing. Of course, this is the quantity that it scanned. Market price, store quantity is how many you have in your store. Uh, the low price of the card, this is the store price, and then the lowest listing. Um, 
what you want to do when you're doing this, though, to avoid um, miss scans is you want to have your set picked correctly. So right now we have Midnight Hunt, English, Printing is Normal, and then you put in your condition. So all of these are pack fresh, um, so I list them as near mint. If I find any that are not, I pull those out later and take care of them on a case-by-case -case basis. There are some settings in here. Um, I have not monkeyed with them too much. If you go to settings, uh, there is a maximum identification time. You want to have this relatively low, and I think standard, it starts out at a second or a second and a half. Confidence rating, I haven't really messed with that. Um, it seems to scan just fine. Every once in a while, it get, will get one wrong, and when that happens, you're just going to click on the card. You're going to fill in the relevant information there. Um, sometimes it'll scan the card wrong and it will make you choose the wrong card. That's fine. Go ahead and choose any card that it says you can. And then click on it again and then put in the actual information. Um, it doesn't happen too often, but it does every once in a while. And for things that have reprint sets like Midnight Hunt and um, Crimson Val, sometimes it will pick the set as uh, double feature. Fine. It's a quick little thing. You're just going to open up the card. You're going to go to set and you're going to pick Midnight Hunt. Easy peasy. When you're done, because now we're done sorting all the, uh, listing all the blue cards, or scanning them, um, you're going to go to submit list. It's going to go ahead and automatically pull up in your seller portal all of the cards that you scanned, and you're just going to hit add to inventory. Now, if you don't have any of these cards in your inventory, You'll see that they're added to the staged inventory and not the live. So, yes, these cards are added to your inventory, but they are not visible to customers. So what you need to do is you need to hit search. This will pull up every card that is in your staged inventory. And it will have a um, price already sub you know entered here. You can go ahead and edit that manually. Um, what I do is I just move to live, search results. That's going to move all of the cards. Hit continue and right there we've got all of our blue cards entered then go to mass price which I've already got open here and you're going to update your pricing so these are all commons and uncommon so I have cult that's common uncommon land and token run the rule I don't uh, really have to worry about anything because I've already got my parameters set up just hit run rule and that will automatically set all your prices um, so then if you refresh here, it should so show, yes, I have 15,328 cards now um, listed in my inventory. Pull this back open. List has successfully been submitted. Clear the list and move on to the next batch. If you're just sorting through pure bulk, what you want to do is uh, go to all sets. The confidence rating is going to be lower for the cards because you're just jumping around between all different sets. But you can just load in a stack, hit go, and what it's going to do is just going to go through there. It's going to spit out all the prices. And that's a good way, if you don't have prices in front of you, to know exactly which cards are worth money. Um, and you can just pull those out and the rest of them you can throw them wherever you want, you know. So basically that's how you use Quicklist. It's very simple. You do have to be a pro seller to use Quicklist on TCG Player, so that is one stipulation that you have to um, uh, you have to meet. When you list all these cards, you can also save them, and you can import from a CSV as well if you want. I I don't know exactly what the usefulness of that is, um, but if you're listing a bunch of cards or saving a bunch of cards, you can save it as a CSV uh, for future reference. You know, if you want to keep a log of everything that you added. Um, but yeah, TCG player quick list is very easy to use. If you're using an overhead scanner, it's going to be the same way, except with an overhead scanner, and it's going to be significantly slower. This, the desktop scanners are not cheap. Um, they are on the pricey side, but for the speed that it allows you, and if you're already running a business, it's likely that you're going to have to be scanning receipts and things as well. Um, it saves you a lot of time. It makes a lot of things very easy. If you save, you uh, scan your receipts or you scan full documents, it's as simple as moving the uh, slider over to handle full documents. And this can scan receipts uh, 
you know, dang near a mile long, basically. Um, it's a great product. I used one of these a long time ago at one of my previous jobs. And from the um, first time that I used one of these, I absolutely loved it. I love the functionality of it because I'm not big on printing things out. Um, and when I do work by hand, I like to be able to just scan it at my desk, you know, save it to a, a file or a drive somewhere and uh, move on with my day. So um, hope you enjoyed this. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Um, again, there are some finicky things with getting this set up, but as long as you use ScanSnap Manager, you should be fine. And um, that will allow you to, you know, scan through literally thousands of cards an hour um, and, and help you turn more profit, lower your costs, etc., etc., etc. Um, I've got uh, some other stuff in the works here. After I get all these sorted, I've got some extra strict saving I want to open. And Corset 2020, I've got a case of that. I really want to open those because there's a $50 uncommon foil in there. It'd be pretty neat to pull one. Um, until then, I will catch you guys later.